I, I have my souffle hat on today because if you get a souffle right, it puffs up like a French chef's head and is as light as a cloud. So what do you want to hear first? The good news or the bad news? Okay, I need you. It's the good news. Okay, so first, this is the ultimate souffle masterclass. There has been nothing like that ever done before in terms of souffles. By the end, you will know everything there is to know about souffles, every souffle trick, tip, souffle chemistry, and souffle histories, and all the hows and the whys. Plus, we will cook three of those cloudy creations so you can apply your newly learned souffle cooking techniques straight away. Great. Okay, so now that's bad news. Are you ready? Well, bad news is there's no more good news. So first, the history. So souffles originate from souffle omelettes and are mentioned first in the 18th centuries as so-called reinforced souffle omelettes when pastry cream and bechamel was added to firm them up. Reinforcing souffles allowed the introduction of different flavors and actually making the souffles we know today. Now the first souffles were mainly made with meat and they were savory, but it was the sweet versions that made it into history. So so why chefs and cooks think they're so difficult? Well, first, souffles are really temperamental, just like some chefs, but I'll tell you more about that later on. So that's probably one of the reasons why we don't often find them on the menus. But it's mainly because souffles are so-called one-shot dishes. When you make a souffle, you need to tick all the boxes, as it is impossible to turn back if something goes wrong. And those boxes we cover today. Now, who am I? My name is Walter Trapp. I used to manage, run, and own some of Europe's best restaurants. Today, I run my own cooking school, and in my cooking school, I run a class just on souffle. So, here are all the highlights from it. So what we don't cover today are frozen souffles and Italian meringue souffles because they're not really actually souffles. So let's go through the basics before we go on to the technical stuff. Now all the ingredients for your souffle should be at warm room temperature. And if you're really finicky then your egg whites should be actually sort of in the mid 20 degrees Celsius because that's the temperature when they make you the best meringue. Now there's three different types of souffles and you have some of the recipes for the ones which I show you today in the link below. So check out the link below. So first the purely egg white based souffles plus flavorings. They are the so-called aluminum souffles. I still need little preparation and they're often cooked in a water pass. Now those are the really, really temperamental souffles and a certain type of chefs will never really perfect them but I'll tell you about that in the end. Okay the second type of souffle is an aluminum souffle but it can have some reinforcements coming from nut meals or chocolate and they are a little bit less temperamental and they're most of the times cooked in a water bath too. Don't worry, you see them all in this video, so hold on. The third souffle is the so-called reinforced souffle which is based on a bechamel sauce or a creme patisserie which are both based on flour. Now those are the really versatile souffles. I find they have the nicest texture and they're never cooked in a water bath because those souffles are also those type of souffles that can be tipped out and unmolded and then be covered with sauce like is oft, so often see in a cheese souffle. Now you know the saying, what goes up must come down. In terms of souffle that means it's a temperature issue, no other issues. During cooking the beaten egg white foam which consists of water and air and proteins. It's a chemistry lesson. You first need to form a skin around your souffle. And I'll tell you in a second why. Because once you have a skin through the coagulating egg white proteins on the outside, you trap the air and the water inside the balloon-like skin. Now hot air expands, you know that. Water at the same time turns into steam and both of them try to escape. But they struggle because the balloon-like skin that has formed from the cooked eggs 
hinders it. So in our case, what the souffle needs to do, it needs to go up, like a balloon that you blow up. The mold, of course, holds it from the sides and it holds it from the bottom. So the only way for the souffle is right through the top. Because when the water inside the souffle turns into steam, it will expand. Hence, it's so important that you seal your souffle from the outside immediately. You achieve that through heat. So you form a crust all around and that's why chefs often put the souffle molds into boiling hot water for a minute before they then dry bake it in the oven. So they heat the mold up really fast. They create a skin really fast. And then the oven is super hot because the more heat you have, the more steam you will create inside the souffle and as higher the souffle will rise. Now you cook your souffle in anything less than 220 degrees Celsius in an oven and you can find that the top of the souffle hardens too much and your mold is cold because it doesn't heat up. The water doesn't turn into steam immediately and then when it eventually happens you find that your souffle breaks on the sides because it hasn't been, the skin hasn't been formed and it overboils or spills out of the molds because the eggs have never coagulated, only on the top. Super hot oven and heat the mold if you don't use a water bath in the oven. Now, if you use a water bath, it needs, of course, to be boiling hot for exactly the same issues. Now, the high heat will, of course, also develop your really nice, crunchy, crispy top. And if you want to improve that even further, then you sprinkle a little bit of sugar on the top of your souffle before you bake it. But I'll tell you a bit more about that later on. Now the cooked egg on the outside will be really nice and chewy. The center will be softened and runny. And a proper souffle should be never be fully cooked. Only half or two thirds the most. If you fully cook it, it will be chewy like overcooked egg proteins. Do you know what I mean? They always get hard. Think about chewy scrambled egg, chewy omelette. So then you probably wonder why do they rise so high if they're not fully cooked? Well, it's because chefs already put them into the mold so high. And I'll show you that. And promise me, never ever put paper around a souffle to fill it higher. I mean, that is real amateur stuff. You and I know amateurs. It looks good on photos, but it's not practical. Anyway. You know now how it rises. A balloon-like skin forms from inside. You have hot hair and steam pushing it up. Just like you have a shoe pastry or bread. And check out my video on eclairs to see how to do that. But because souffles don't have the gluten or loads of starch, they eventually collapse and come down because the hot air steam inside turns back into water and that's where they come down eventually. You know they say, the higher the rise, the lower the fall. Especially with aluminum souffles, you will have that issue. But then, hey, the French call a collapsed souffle actually a mousseline. But it has not become very popular, hence nobody knows about mousseline omelettes. But if it happens to you, you now have the excuse that you can confidently present to your guests mousseline omelettes. So summary here is that after rising, when you remove it from the oven, the souffle will inevitably sink as hot air contracts and the weak low starch walls offer little stability and next thing I want to discuss with you are the molds. You need to use really really large souffle molds. Those little sort of Mickey Mouse molds will never work because there's not enough depth to it, there's not enough width and the souffles basically don't have that center and it will overcook in no time and it will be chewy and it will be not great. You need a large and deep mold like those. I mean, think about it. Souffles consist mainly of hot air. So, of course, you can serve a much bigger portion. 
Next thing, buttering the molds is really important, especially on the top so that the souffle can slip out easily and does not get caught on the sides, okay? So, sprinkling the sides with sugar has two functions. Don't worry about the bottom, just the sides, otherwise you make it overly sweet. Now, when the souffle bakes, the melting sugar will make your souffle really nice and shiny on the sides, but it will also give the souffle strength from the sides and make it hold better together. It strengthens the side walls and gives the souffle also something to cling on when it comes out of the mold and it doesn't boil over that easily. And it adds a little bit of a denser texture on the outside, which goes really well because the center is really soft anyway. Hence, a sprinkling of sugar on the top, which I told you before, creates even an even nicer crunch on the top too. So the same really happens when people add brick rums or cacao or grated cheese. Okay, so next thing, almost through, most important is the egg white meringue. Now the best consistency is creamy, stiff, moist, it's a sort of a gloss, soft peak. Meringue that's fully whipped is very stiff and it's a so-called hard meringue. It becomes too dry and it's really hard to mix it back into the base mixture. A general rule is first whisk and stir in one third of the beaten egg white into the base mixture before you gently fold in the remaining egg white meringue where you try to lose as little air as possible. You will always lose air because the base mixture contains fat and it will rub against the cell walls of the air bubbles in the meringue and make them pop. Hence disturbing the meringue as little as possible is the key to your success here, okay? Therefore it needs to be stirred rather than whisked, okay? Folding only works on the surface and whisking goes right through the mix. The folding needs to be slow so you don't push the base mix too hard against the beaten egg whites. And by doing so, you create less damage. Now the trick is to mix the two materials as gentle and as little as possible. Now in an ideal world, you would only lose a quarter of a third of the air in that process. Now when stirring, always stir from the bottom upwards you know, from the bottom of the bowl to pick up any thick dough that is stuck down there. And then next it goes into the mold. And here you need to create a dome-shaped heap. The souffle when cooking will basically mushroom out, okay? So try to get it into the mold at least one centimeter sticking upwards or even up to two centimeters, but you need to know your souffle. Now that's why restaurant souffles look so much higher because chefs put them in a the mold already that high. Now does that make sense? Now then get a little spatula or a little knife and create a little gap between the mold and the souffle to help the heat to travel in there really fast and set it right from the beginning before it mushrooms out. Chefs often do that when they run their thumb around the top of the souffle. You can do that too, too. And spilled over dough, you always have to clean away. And it needs sometimes rebuttering of the area or the mold so the souffle can move and does not get stuck on the side and sticks. Otherwise, the attached dough will hold the souffle back and it's gonna start to look like the leaning tower of Pisa. Now the same can happen if you cook your souffle at fan force. That's why you always need to cook your souffle at traditional bake. So the fan can blow it onto one one side and then when you bake it you need to also make sure that you don't put more than four to five molds into a 60 centimeter wide oven in order the heat can travel up and around between those molds. Otherwise the souffles on the side cook only on the outside and the ones in the center might be totally undercooked. 
Now, if the mixture allows you, pipe it into the mold because that's the easiest. You don't have to do the thumb thing and the knife thing, okay? Or just scoop it in really high. Uh, it just looks as good. And because they don't hand out Michelin stars for home cooking anyway, so even if they don't look that perfect on the top, I'll tell you what, nobody will know. So someone asked me the other day if you can reheat souffles. Yes, of course you can do that to some extent with flour-based souffles, not so much with the egg white souffles or aluminum souffles. Now chefs then often call them twice cooked souffles. <laughs> no, 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 no. They, they actually should rename them because they actually not twice cooked, they are reheated. And for matter of fact, most of the times they get reheated in the microwave anyway. So no further comment here. Now I'll rest my case. Triple cooked souffles. Well, okay, let's not go there. All right, so a few other questions I always hear in my class. I want to add them like adding salt to your egg whites before beating them. That's a no-no as this salt will break your egg white down where it becomes really watery, really liquidy. That's the last thing you want to do to your meringue because you want it to be really nice and spongy. Now opening the oven door, that's a big discussion. You can do that, but only after the souffle forms the skin and starts rising. It is possible, but it's not recommended. Now, you need to also understand that when you bake your souffle, you will see that nothing happens for the first three, four, five minutes because the souffle is actually forming its skin. Now once that balloon-like skin has formed, and the outer layers have set, the souffle will act like a balloon. So yes, if you open the oven door, it goes down a bit, you close it, it goes up a bit, okay? But with today's ovens, that's not really a problem any anymore because most of them have a glass window. And then you need to serve your souffles and you need to have plenty helpers to get it to the table and eat it immediately as souffles. Deflate really quickly when in contact with cold air. Now souffles are actually ideal for dinner party as everything can be prepared. You know, your molds can be buttered, your base mix can be ready. All you need to do is to make sure the oven is hot and then whisk your egg white meringue and fold it together, which brings me one back to the egg whites. Now when whisking them, make sure they are warm. Beat them without any fat or any dirt in your bowl as it will not rise. No egg yolk bits and don't add the sugar until they're fully whipped. Now when the egg white meringue is fully whipped, then you add the sugar. Whip it for another two to three minutes and then they will be perfect and silken and creamy and firm and have flexible peaks. You know all the stuff you need, okay? So don't fully whip it. And here are some of my souffle favorites. So first, an aluminum souffle, which is literally made from four ingredients. It's a cheesecake souffle. It's really simple. It literally is just going to take you 10 to 12 minutes to make it from the beginning till the end. Now, I always like to put some stuff in my souffles on the bottom. In this case, you can put something like a strawberry compote, strawberry and rhubarb. So we start off with mixing some egg yolks together with some cream cheese and some lemon zest. And once that's all nice and creamy, that's it. Simultaneously, you start whipping the egg white, fold in one third of the egg white mixture before following up with the remaining mixture. And then you just fold it together, it goes into the mold. You make a nice dome shape, of course, and because it is a cream cheese souffle, you're gonna have to cook it in the oven in a water bath. So we start off with a boiling hot water bath that then goes into the oven. So souffle baking time also depends very much on the size of your mold. So in that case, we need around six to eight minutes. Larger mold takes a little bit longer. 
And here we go. That is your cream cheese souffle. You can make that in 10 minutes and it tastes super good. Next one, partially reinforced chocolate souffle. So all we're gonna do here now is start off with the same thing, put a bit of orange jam on the bottom, melt some chocolate with the egg white meringue until it's really nice and creamy. Then add one third of the egg white meringue to the chocolate mixture, fold that together and then add the remaining meringue, stir that all nicely together. That actually makes an amazing, amazing chocolate mousse. And then you pipe it into the mold, then you can sprinkle on some sugar on the top, and then you basically need to start cooking it in a water bath. So we leave it in a water bath for one minute to heat up the mold, then it goes into the oven and you bake it for around 8 to 10 minutes at 220 degrees and that is your pita chocolate souffle. Next one, reinforced chocolate souffle. So for this you need to make a creme patisserie. So we start off with some milk, stir in some corn flour, add some egg yolks, you have the recipes in the link below and then basically simultaneously you start bringing some milk to the boil. Once the milk boils you add the mixture of egg yolks and corn flour and don't worry the egg yolks will not break or split because the corn flour or the starch molecules will stop the proteins from re-coagulating and then the mixture gets a bit thick like you see it's a bit lumpy that's just the more cooked bits once it then all cooks it becomes all creamy add the sugar add the bitter chocolate and like that you could set it aside that could be strawberry jam if i want to make a strawberry souffle it could be raspberry jam if i want to make a raspberry souffle so that is your base for all your sort of French style souffles. With the egg white, when you whip the egg white, add the sugar at the end because the sugar crystals can rub against each other and break up the egg white bubbles and then your meringue becomes quite runny, thick, creamy and you don't have that much air in it. And then just shape it as I've shown you in the video before and it goes into the dry oven for around six to eight to 10 minutes. Again, depending on the size of your mold. And some final tips, souffles mostly only work in large amount and if for example you reduce the recipe, you know the amount in a recipe, you half it, you find this suddenly don't work anymore. And always cook your souffles to the bottom of the oven to allow a more even rising and prevent the top from burning because it's too high to the, to the top. I mean, you have to admit, there was a pretty impressive in-depth sessions. So why don't you do me a favor and help me out making such videos and sign up for my very, very special online cooking course offer. And, oh, you still want to know why temperamental chefs don't make good souffles? Well, I tell you, because the temperamental chefs clash with the temperamental souffles and then it often becomes really emotional, you know? And that's where things become a bit dramatic and souffles end up on the kitchen walls and fridge doors get kicked and, and customers get called names. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out my video on sources of three Michelin star chefs and thank you so much for watching.